packed agenda. And welcome to our first first quarter, well, our first lunch and learn of the year, our first quarter lunch and learn on gadgets and assistive technology. We are so happy to have you with us. Um, we are a community-led, community-driven organization and could not do any of this without all of you. Thanks for being with us. A couple of um, housekeeping points. We would ask that everybody stay muted. We also have video turned off today because we have a very large number of attendees coming in. Um, we set records on registration numbers for this particular meeting and we're so excited about that, but um, to help with productivity and um, technology, we are gonna keep our video off. So thank you for um, respecting those uh, housekeeping items. So please stay muted, thank you. Um, and we are also going to save the Q&A for the end of the meeting. So we will welcome our guest speaker, Ashley, in a moment, and she will share a wonderful presentation with us. And then at the end, we will grab the questions from the chat feature. Um, so please go ahead and put your questions in the chat, maybe more towards the end, because I would bet that your question will be answered at some point during the presentation. So if not, then throw your question in at the end. That would be wonderful. Um, let's see, we will, as you know, be recording the meeting because it alerted you when you came in. And we will share that recording once edited. I will email that out to everyone who registered. Um, one of our commitments to you um, at the CMTA, one of part of our mission is to help share resources that help improve quality of life. So one of the education pieces that we are developing this year is actually a gadget toolbox that will live on our website so that whenever you have needs and questions and you're looking for resources about gadgets, about assisted technology, we will be building that as a toolbox for you to live on our website. So stay tuned for that announcement once it's finished. Um, we'll work on that throughout the year. And then it is my pleasure and honor to introduce you to Ashley McLeroy. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but she'll also introduce herself. Ashley is the director of Alabama's Assisted Technology Act Program among many other credentials and titles, and she can tell you a little bit more about herself, but we greatly appreciate you sharing your time. I'm just gonna mute that person. Sorry about that, everyone. Um, we appreciate you sharing your time and expertise with us, Ashley, today, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is super, super, super exciting. Assistive technology is certainly one of my passions. Um, I have been a part of assistive technology services now for 14 years um, here in Alabama through the Alabama Department of Rehabilitation Services. In the last couple of years, I've gotten to help develop an assistive technology program for our state. So I absolutely love it. But in addition to that, I also have CMT. So I do have a lifetime of experience uh, trying to navigate the symptoms of CMT as well as working with family members that also have CMT. So I went a little cheesy, I have to be honest. <laughs> and when I started the title of Gadgets, Gizmos, and AT, I just went, oh my. And so you just get to put up with a Wizard of Oz themed slideshow today. Um, please forgive me if that's just too cheesy for you, but assistive technology is just really fun for me, so I couldn't help it. All right. So. I wanted to start out because I take for granted that I'm in the assistive technology world that not everybody completely understands what assistive technology is. And I used a picture of um, Dorothy's ruby red slippers because the theme in that in the movie is that those slippers, whenever she finally received those, it helped her get back home. Even though we feel like she had the ability to get home all along, those slippers were something that assisted her. So I wanted to give you the technical definition of assistive technology, which is a little wordy. It's any item, piece of equipment, 
software program or product system that is used to increase, maintain, or improve the functional capabilities of persons with disabilities. Now, I do want to note that you see the little superscript one on this slide. I have tried to provide you with resources at the end of this presentation, and you should get a, a link to the slides at the end. So you don't feel, don't feel like you have to write down notes from all of this. If you see the little superscripts, that means I've given you the resource for that. No one really wants the resource for the technical definition, but it is what it is. I want to give you my simple definition, which is, Assistive technology is just a tool of some sort that can help someone achieve a goal or accomplish a task. It doesn't have to be for disabilities. Everyone uses assistive technology. All right, here we go with the first of the cheesy references. First, we want to talk about gadgets for there's no place like home. So I'm going to give you kind of an overview of assistive technology that can be used in your home. It's by no means comprehensive because assistive technology is just expansive. There's so many different types that you can use. But some of the new things that are coming out in home automation is wonderful in the assistive technology world because it's not that expensive. So uh, we can actually start adding home automation products to our home for about $30 by purchasing an Amazon Echo Dot. Now they have the more advanced systems like what's pictured, which is the Echo Show. And um, those give you also the visual uh, features of smart speakers. Now, once you've added a smart speaker into your home, you can start adding components that will do things around your home. Some of my favorites include temperature control, uh, the vacuums and the mops, lighting, and security systems. And um, you can control those either by voice with the smart speakers. If you aren't that thrilled about having a smart speaker in your home, that's okay because our smartphones also have systems built in and that allow us to control and automate our homes directly from our phones, which would be your iOS home or your Google Home apps that you can purchase. Um, and then you can add products to that that you can control even without a smart speaker. Now, I do want to mention about the lighting in your home. There's several different options. And the reason I really like this for CMT is because it saves us steps. And the more uh, ways that I can conserve my energy and reduce my pain levels by using this technology and not having to get up and turn off lights or adjust the thermostat, that makes me really happy. So with lighting especially, you can go from complex, which is where you're removing your light switch and you're replacing it with a smart light switch and that requires some electrical work, or you could do something simple just by replacing the light bulbs. But there's also these really cool things called little switch bots that you can mount over the top of a light switch and it can be controlled by voice to turn, it'll flip your light switches on and off. So there's a couple of options for that. Going more into the home automation route, you can also set up routines and Alexa is really intuitive in helping you do this. She'll give you a lot of suggestions. So for example, I can set up a routine to where when I say, Alexa, good night, try not to say her name too loud because I have one sitting on my desk. Um, she will set our alarm. That gives us peace of mind. We don't have to get up and check that we've made sure that we set the alarm or locked the doors. Um, she can adjust our thermostat so that we have it at a comfortable sleeping temperature. She can turn on the smart fan, turn off our lights, announce the weather for tomorrow so I can go ahead as I'm falling asleep, think about what I'm gonna wear. Um, she can also speak a reminder. So if there's something that you typically forget to do that you wanna make sure that you've done, like take medication or set out uh, the meat for tomorrow's dinner, she can speak a reminder to say, hey, did you remember to do this? Um, and then she can also start sleep sounds or an audiobook, whatever you like to fall asleep to. So there's tons and tons of things that you can do. Um, and it's very simple. And all it takes is you having one command and all of those things will be done for you. 
Now, I love to cook, but I do have to limit the amount that I cook because of the amount of pain that it does cause standing in the kitchen. But there are some things that can help you be able to cook more efficiently or with ease, depending on your level of need. And I didn't want to just go on this forever because there are tons and tons of products out there that can be used for cooking. But I wanted to mention a couple of my favorites that don't seem to be as well known. And uh, some of those include the angle knives and adapted utensils specifically for cutting. I do have an image here in the middle, which includes an angled knife and this product called Active Hands. And I really like the Active Hands company because if you go on their website, they even have a section on there that you can click on specifically for Charco Marie Tooth. So you can actually see which products they recommend for CMT. And we can also use a variety of other gripping aids that will allow you to have some sort of gripping aid on your hand. And then um, you can put a utensil in and it'll hold that utensil for you if you don't have the ability to um, grip something and hold on to it. There's also adapted cutting boards. So the one I have pictured is really cool. It has the ability to grasp and hold on to a, a piece of fruit or a vegetable that you are cutting. It also has spikes on it. So you could set like a tomato down on the, the spikes. And that way, if you have trouble coordinating two hands or you need to use two hands while you're cutting through a product, you, um, you can actually just let the cutting board do some of the work for you. And then also spice dispensers. So one of my favorites is this little carousel. And the reason I like it is because if you'll notice at the bottom, it has these little turnstile um, options on there. And what that does is it distributes one quarter teaspoon of your spice at a time. So you don't have to fiddle with additional measuring spoons or um, other objects to measure with. You just turn that little dial and it will measure it out for you. I also really love the automatic grinders as well that have come out, the battery powered grinders, um, because it can be really painful to grind salt and pepper, even though it tastes a lot better when you use them. Um, the automatic grinders are really nice because a lot of them are gyroscopic, which means when you turn it over, when you turn it upside down, it automatically detects that and it'll start grinding. So I, I wanted to give a quick example um, of some objects that can be used in the kitchen. So this is a, a little video that we did, my husband and I, on different products that we used for making a pizza. And we used the jar opener. Now we're using a slicer to cut the olives. Next, we're putting it into a smart oven. He's using a push-pull stick to pull that oven rack out, and then we're using pizza scissors to cut it. Some other things that I like to uh, recommend for the kitchen are things like these appliance caddies. So this allows you to Put an appliance on this tray and then it helps you slide it easier on your counter. So if you struggle because you have a heavy coffee pot and you generally like it to be pushed to the back of the counter but um, because you need this, the counter space but then you have to pull it forward in order to use it to open it to pour water in or whatever this appliance caddy will slide a lot easier for you you could even install like a little knob or a handle to make it easier to pull you could also use something like a little dolly so think about the dollies that you can put under a small trash can or a planter and you could use a dolly like that on your countertop. So especially like, let's say you're boiling a big pot of water and you're having trouble carrying that pot from one side of your counter to the other. You could put that pot on the dolly and move it across your counter. I have a lot of trouble personally with standing for long periods of time. 
Um, so it's nice to be able to sit in a stool when you're working in the kitchen. However, if the counter space is not made to allow for knee space, it can be difficult to sit and be able to reach what you're working on. So these saddle stools are really nice because it allows your knees to drop off to the side so that you can get closer to your workspace. And then I also always recommend these grocery planning apps because I think that along with some of the pain and fatigue comes that mental fatigue and the mental drain of trying to plan things, but also because we want to save steps when we're in the grocery store. We don't want to have to make a lot of effort going back to an aisle because we forgot to get something that was on our list. So some of the planning apps that I recommend, one of them includes the Samsung Food app. I really like that one because it actually is built sort of like a Pinterest page where you can save recipes that you want to try. And then there's a planner side of that. And you can add meals to the planner that you would like to cook. And you can put it on what days you want to uh, have that meal that helps with that mental load of trying to figure out what you're cooking for dinner that night, going ahead and planning it out in advance. And then once you have your meals planned out, you just click and say, create a shopping list for me. So then it'll take all the ingredients from your planner and it'll create a shopping list for you. And it'll organize everything by type or category and it'll consolidate. So if you have one pound of chicken for one recipe and a pound and a half of chicken for another, it'll put on your shopping list that you need two and a half pounds of chicken. And then also you could use the Alexa shopping list. So if you want to say, hey, uh, Alexa, add um, grapes to my shopping list. She'll do that for you. But my favorite app is one that my husband and I share. You can sync it with your family members and it's called Our Groceries. And what I like about it is that you can customize the aisles by the layout of your grocery store. And then once you're adding items to your list, it'll organize those items by aisle. You can add photos and notes. So if you're having to, like in my case, um, a lot of times my husband is the one who runs the errands uh, because he's able to walk a lot easier than me. He's six foot two. He gets things, he can walk a lot quicker too. So he's the one that will stop and pick something up from the grocery store if we need it. And if he's not quite sure what the product is that I'm asking for, I can add a picture to that list and um, he will be able to see specifically what we need. Also, you can ask um, Alexa even to say, ask our groceries to add shrimp to the shopping list and she will add it directly to this app rather than the shopping list within her application. And the reason this saves steps is because as I'm going through the store, I can look and after I've left the baking aisle or when I'm about to leave the baking aisle, I'll look at my list and make sure I got every single thing from that aisle so I don't get four aisles down and then have to return. Some other things that we can use when it's time to eat, um, specifically for ourselves, are these adaptive knives and utensils. There's ones that are more weighted, that have bigger grips on them. There's some that have um, foam that you can wrap around your wrist to help you hold on to it. There's ones that will self-level themselves so that if you're struggling, to get the utensil from your plate to your mouth without dropping everything, it'll self-level. Um, there's also the gripping aids that you can add to your utensils to help you hold it if, if you're lacking the ability to grasp. Um, in the bottom picture is actually a sandwich holder that I found that would make it a little bit easier to hold a product that has multiple layers to it and is difficult to maintain a grasp on. And that one is collapsible, which is really cool. And then also it can be difficult to pour beverages into a glass or um, transport heavy bottles and things or pick up a big 
pitcher of tea, a gallon of tea out of the refrigerator. We call it sweet tea here in the South. We don't drink any iced tea down here. So if you have trouble picking up your gallon of uh, iced tea or sweet tea, then you could put a spigot attachment and um, just be able to put your glass up to that spigot and have it pour into your cup. This works really well for like milk and orange juice. And um, you may have to use a different type of pitcher or container for tea and things like that that you make yourselves. Also, transporting items around the kitchen can be risky. You could risk tripping and falling or losing your balance, but you could also risk losing that beautiful dinner that you just cooked. Um, and so one of the things that I recommend is to have something like this little bar cart, which would allow you to move your meal from the kitchen to uh, the table so that you're not trying to balance as much. And it also gives you support while walking. Um, also, they have this thing called the spill knot, which you can put your beverage on and then it'll balance itself. There's also the no spill bowls that you could use um, that are really cool. And then um, our Kroger, we, we do Kroger delivery now because I learned that it's very helpful to not have to walk around around a grocery store anymore. So we do Kroger delivery and we typically will use a cart to go pick up the grocery bags from the truck. And our Kroger delivery guy loves us because um, they don't have to carry everything to our front door. We're coming out with a cart and picking everything up. So these are very helpful, even whether you're shopping for groceries or just doing general shopping. Things around the home that um, help with grooming. So they do have these hair dryer stands. If you have trouble holding on to a hair dryer, those can get really heavy uh, during the length of time that you are drying your hair. Also, it can be kind of cumbersome uh, to coordinate a two-handed action. Um, they do have things like the easy grips, which are on that toothbrush in the photo to help you hold on to your toothbrush. And those are silicone, so they're easy to clean. They have toothpaste dispensers. So I absolutely cannot stand having to squeeze the last little bit of toothpaste out of the tube. Um, we end up with a drawer full of almost empty toothpaste tubes because my husband says there's still some in there and he's going to use it. And I just keep opening a new one because I don't like squeezing the, the life out of them. But they have these toothpaste dispensers that uh, can even be motion censored or mechanical to put toothpaste on your, your toothbrush. There's also things that can help with um, your shaving. So you could have a gripping aid for your razors. I'm just checking. Um, you can have a gripping aid for your razors. And um, there's also an extended handle that you could use for razors to, to keep you from having to bend over to shave because it can be really dangerous in the shower if, to lose your balance if you're trying to bend over. Okay, I cannot stress enough how important it is to find a way to be safe getting in and out of the tub. So I put this example down of um, a sliding transfer bench that also fits over your toilet so that you can sit down in a space that's comfortable because sometimes it's difficult when your shower chair is in the tub to try to get over and seated on that chair. So this is just an, an option that's um, not typically found just in any uh, drug store. So I wanted to show it. Um, it fits over your tub. You can sit down on it and then it'll slide on that rail. So as long as you're able to pick your feet up and over the side of your tub, you should be able to get into the tub more safely. However, I do just recommend making sure that you're using something if you're not if you're not feeling stable in the tub, make sure you're using something to help you sit down or maneuver in and out of the tub. I 
will stand on my soapbox about the days. I think they're fantastic. It's taboo for some reason in America to use a bidet, but they're fantastic. It's just, it's more hygienic and it's so much easier if you're struggling with your hands to um, clean yourself, to use a bidet. They have these toilet seat attachments that work as a bidet. Um, you can also use a handheld bidet sprayer, which attaches to your water line if you don't want to replace the whole toilet seat. And they also have portable bidets as well that um, are even battery powered that you can use. And then again, with the automatic dispensers so that you're not trying to pick up bottles and drop them on the floor and then you're having to bend over and pick them up. I'm using automatic dispensers or the ones that are mechanical with push levers are very helpful in distributing shampoo and your body wash. Okay, the next cheesy reference. Okay, let's look at gizmos for wicked chores. This one's short because I don't really want to bore you all with chores, but chores stink in general. So the more that we can use assistive technology to do them, the better. So the electric scrubbers and drill attachments, um, those are getting more popular and those are really nice to try to prevent some of the strain from scrubbing. It also, they have nice handles, so it also helps with um, the, gr the gr grasping. It can be hard to grasp a sponge and put enough pressure on it. So those are really great. If you don't want to buy the separate device, they have attachments that can go on your drill specifically for... Um, specifically for cleaning. And then also, um, the trash can be quite a booger, especially if you're using larger bags and you're struggling to get it out of the trash can so you can take the trash out. I really like the idea of considering, if this works for your routine, to use smaller bags like grocery bags. And you can find these grocery bag holders that can hang on uh, the side of your cabinet. We actually have one that rolls, so we're able to roll it under our counter, and it holds a couple of grocery bags. And so the idea behind using the smaller trash bags is even though you might have to take it out more frequently, they're not as heavy and it's not as difficult. You're not fighting with your trash to be able to take it out. And then also considering if you do use a larger trash can, maybe adding a dolly to it or some sort of wheel system so that it's easy to maneuver. But then the shining star of assistive technology for chores is got to be the robot vacuums and mops. Those are definitely gaining in popularity. People use use them whether they have disabilities or not because they're just super useful. They keep your home cleaner without extra effort. I highly recommend if you're going to get a robot vacuum, if you're doing the research on it, look for one that is self-emptying because otherwise that robot may get halfway through your home and need to be cleaned out and that's not really saving you any mental energy or physical energy when you have to stop what you're doing and go empty the vacuum. So if you get one that's self-emptying, it lasts for several months before you have to empty the uh, container on the device. Laundry is another booger that's never ending. Uh, it's just something that we have to do all the time. So I always like to address this one. I am thrilled about smart washers and dryers. For years, I struggled with helping consumers figure out how to manage pouring laundry detergent or scooping. And it's just really cumbersome with the big bottles that they come in and measuring it all out. Well, these smart washers will do it for you. So they have some with the self-dispensing, auto-detecting, so it knows how big the load is in the washer, and it will determine how much detergent it needs to dispense. You can pour almost an entire bottle into the washer, and then it'll let you know when it's almost out. Another cool thing about it is, especially if you're not able to hear your washer and dryer, um, you'll get notifications to your phone when it's about five minutes till the cycle's complete. It'll let you know, because 
I, I never get up and go get the laundry out like I should. So it'll let you know. And the there's wet laundry that's been sitting in the washer for more than 30 minutes. I just conveniently always forget somehow to go get the laundry out and it'll give you reminders. I also always recommend the rolling laundry carts. And if you get one that's already got sorters in it, that helps you. It takes less energy to actually start doing the laundry. So that's really nice. It can be kind of dangerous to try to haul your laundry by carrying those heavy baskets across the room or across your house. And then here's another thing that always gets me is never being able to find a match to my socks. And it's gotten to the point where my husband knows that it's such a drain on me to stand and try to find matching socks. Um, I found these sock, well, the, you can look for sock clips, but these are uh, little bungee cords that you can pair up socks before you put it into the wash so that when it's done, they're still paired together. And that's less energy that you have to spend doing your laundry. You can thank me later. Okay, so now if we only had gadgets for our brain, let's look at this one. So I wanted to talk about sleeping well. We already face enough fatigue, right? So think about how we could use assistive technology to make sure that we're getting the best sleep that we can possibly get. There's lots of things out there that are pretty common, so I didn't want to spend too much time on those. But I wanted to tell you about some of these things that are not so well known. Um, so the smarts are the there's some of them are smart, some of them are just you set them on your your uh, nightstand and it's all programmable without having to go through a phone, which a lot of people like. So they're called sleep wake lamps. And what those do is if you have trouble um, transitioning from being active all day, it's, it's daytime, and now you've got to go to sleep and you just can't shut down, these will actually create sort of a sunset mode feeling in your room. So it helps your uh, brain start registering that it's time for bed. And then in the morning, you tell it what time you're going to get up. And uh, before it's time to get up, it'll start creating a sunrise in your room. And that signals to your brain that it's time to get up and you'll feel more rested when you wake up because you're not jolting awake from your alarm. It's also really important to consider using blue light blockers, whether that means that you have blue light filters added to your prescription lenses or you use a separate pair of glasses like these blue light glasses. Um, blue light can really affect your ability to sleep. And so it's important to make sure that you're using blue light blockers. You could also use them on your computer screen. Some computers have built-in settings that you can adjust to reduce the amount of blue light that you are experiencing. But your smartphones, your tablets, your TVs, all of those things are producing light that's making it more difficult for us to sleep. And then also, if you need it, some sleep sounds. So I use sleep sounds. The sleep sounds are more from a dog, actually, to keep her from barking at things in the middle of the night. Uh, I personally love having a fan on. That white noise is very helpful to me. Um, but we we ask Alexa to play uh, Babbling Brook whenever we go to sleep so that we have that constant sound in the background. So you can buy separate sleep sounds. You could buy little earplugs that produce sleep sounds, or you could use your phone or something like a smart speaker. And then also, um, it can be really difficult to, when you're fatigued, to remember all the things that have to get done or um, things that you were told. And so I wanted to address a couple of things that you could do to help you remember. One of my favorite tools that we recommend all the way from people who are students in school to individuals who are um, independent in their living situation, but they're having trouble remembering, is called the Live Scribe Smart Pen. It records audio while you're taking handwritten notes. So it just looks like a, piece, a, a, a notepad and a pen, but you, 
you tap on the little record button on the piece of paper and it'll start recording audio. So then you don't have to try to jot down quite as much whenever you are taking notes because afterwards you can go back and tap on your handwritten notes and it will play back the audio that was recorded in that moment. So this is extremely helpful for things like doctor's appointments where we go in and they just purge all this information that we can't remember um, when we go back home. And so you could actually have a, a recorded reference to go back and listen to after the fact. Helps for things like going to the cell phone store and they're teaching you how to do something on your cell phone or, um, when you're at a meeting at work or whatever you need it for, it helps a lot. You can also use your notes app on your smartphones. And the reason I'm specifically talking about the iOS notes app is because you can collaborate with uh, friends and family on a to-do list. So if you have a lot of things that need to get done, you could create a list in your notes, share that with a collaborator, and then you guys can uh, start making a list and check off as things are getting done. You can also set up reminders on your phone with location-based reminders. So your phone will recognize whenever you get to a certain location and it'll say, hey, we noticed you're here. You were supposed to do X, Y, Z when you got to this location. And then also, I really like using our smart speakers to remind me to do things because once I get settled at the end of the day, I tend to forget some of the things that I was supposed to do. I have left the hose pipe on for hours because I went out to water the plants, forgot it was on. Hours later, we're like, we got to go turn that off now. And so what we actually started doing is once I go out and I turn on the water hose, I come immediately back in and I say, Alexa, remind me in an hour to go turn the hose pipe off. Also, anytime I turn on the candle warmer, Alexa, remind me to turn the candle warmer off. And she'll actually say, hey, that sounds like a really important reminder. Do you want me to continue to remind you to do this? until you tell me you've done it. And I'll say absolutely, positively, because I don't want to leave that candle warmer on. Okay, so what if we only had gadgets for our heart? Cute old tin man he is. So I wanted to talk about your well-being and movement is a really important part of that. It can be very difficult when you have CMT to have the motivation to get up and move. And so finding some things that are a little bit more motivating, um, like virtual reality and adaptive gaming, the reference that I have in here for you is actually to an organization called Able Gamers, and they work with people of all different types of disabilities, and their mission is to increase access to gaming for individuals with disabilities. So just know that that's a, an option that's out there and it's becoming really popular. Um, exercise A's, I'm going back to these active hands. So um, they actually have products that can be used to help you hold on to pull-up bars or weights while you're exercising. There's also adaptive sports equipment. So there's adaptive bikes and there's also things like frame runners that can help support you while you're running. Your mental health is also really important. So I wanted to tell you about one of the popular devices that we have in our lending library, which is these sun therapy lamps and they mimic daylight. So if you're daylight's actually proven to increase mood and enhance energy. Uh, so um, you can actually turn this on. It can sit on your desk and you can turn it on and it'll mimic daylight and give you some of the benefits of being in the, the sun. You could also consider adding electric shades to your home or smart shades. The reason I really like this is because it is very difficult for some people to be able to do this independently. They may rely on somebody else to open their blinds for them. Um, that can really increase the opportunity for depression when you're sitting in a dark room all day long. And so I think it's very important to have access to be able to see outside and see the sunlight even when you can't get out there. And so these electric shades are very useful for that.
And then there's also tons and tons and tons of mindfulness apps. Um, there's also teletherapy and things that you can participate in to get you to a better mental state if you need that support. Hobbies are really important. So um, the examples I have here, this is the guided hands in the middle that actually supports your forearm and will hold the utensil for you. So whether you are painting or drawing, writing or whatever, that device is really cool. There's also different aids for to help you with fishing. And that's on the Active Hands website. So they have not only the supports that can hold the fishing rod for you, but they also have this really cool device that'll set your hook for you if it detects that a fish has um, bitten on your hook. And then there's this really cool utensil that can be used to hold your guitar pick if you have trouble with that fine motor pinching. Gardening is one of the fun things, one of the hobbies that I've been trying to get more into. I think it provides me with really good physical activity and um, I feel a lot of reward from being able to grow things in my garden that I can then add to my dinner or make a healthy dinner. And so I really recommend these garden carts and kneelers if you have the space in your garden that you can accommodate for the garden cart, it rolls around, it'll hold your tools for you, and then it provides a little stool, a seat for you. Um, the kneelers are typically something that you can sit on, then you flip it over, and it'll give you a spot for your knees to sit. Um, we're also going to let the robots win because the robot lawnmowers are really cool. You set up a perimeter and schedule it to mow and it'll uh, mow for you. So that takes an extra task away. That's sometimes not that fun unless you just really love cutting grass like some of my friends do. Um, and then if you can't get outside, if you don't have the space or the, the physical aspect of it is just too difficult, look into these countertop gardens or the hydroponic garden systems because those make it a little easier um, to grow things uh, that are easy to reach and easy to maintain. Another uh, variety of things that can be used for outside in the garden, there's different types of attachments that you can add to garden tools. There's also adapted garden tools. I really love the lightweight flex hose. It's so much easier to move around in my yard with that hose because it's very, very lightweight. If you don't want to use Alexa to remind you to turn off your hose or to even water your plants, if that's something that's difficult to remember to do or difficult to get to, set up a drip system and then use one of these timers on your hoses so it'll automatically water for you. I also highly recommend the uh, very lightweight misters. So if you want to go around instead of carrying a big pitcher of water to um, water your plants or a watering can, you use one of these more lightweight ones, it's easier to navigate with. And then my husband absolutely loves this attachment that can go on spray bottles. So if you're having to use any kind of insecticide or you're spray painting, this just clips right onto the top of that disposable bottle. And rather than having to press down on that little painful um, knob to spray, you actually squeeze it like a trigger. Pets. I think pets are something that's very important. Uh, if you love animals and you want to have an animal, but you're worried about the the responsibility and the 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 fatigue of having to take care of them and play with a puppy or clean up the litter box or feed them, it, there's some things out there that can help you with that. So there's definitely some options for automatic food dispensers, water dispensers, and treat dispensers. Some of those are even smart activated. So you can connect them to your Alexa system so that it will automatically uh, feed or water or send a treat whenever you give a voice command. Other ones are timers. So you can schedule when the food needs to be distributed. So this is keeping you from having to pick up a heavy container of food every day and scoop it. You do it one time for the length of however that, that's gonna last, you pour it into this dispenser and then you don't have to worry about it again until it's empty. 
these smart toys are really cool. So the one that's pictured is actually called the Wicked Bone, and you can drive it with your smartphone. So if you have a very active pet and you just don't have the energy to, to get out and play with them and burn off some of the their energy get one of these smart toys because they will chase it around and all you're doing is just navigating on your phone to drive the toy around it's really cool and then also I had a friend that got one of these self-cleaning litter boxes and she said it was a game changer for her because it was it felt so much more sanitary it was less responsibility for her um they have the ones that also roll up pee pads if you need that. And um, all you're having to do is just dispose of things at the, the end. Okay, very quickly. Totally cool tech that's out there. To totally cool tech. For mobility, some of the new things that we've seen come out here in our lending library. These folding power chairs, they're about 60 pounds. They're very easy to travel with. These power assist attachments. So this one's called the Firefly at the top. It attaches to a manual wheelchair. It gives you that power assist. Sit to stand walkers. This one's called the Zine. It gives you a little boost when you want to stand. And it gives you a little support when you're standing as well. And then you can also sit on it and use it sort of like a transport chair fashion. I love my Billy footwear. It's so much easier to get my shoes on my feet, uh, even with AFOs, because they unzip completely. There's other shoes out there that are also modified and adapted for um, AFOs or unique feet. There's been an advancement in adapting of clothing. So you'll see Victoria's Secret, Lane Bryant, all these places that are including adaptive clothing. One of the cool brands that we have uh, recently used is Spring Rose, which is an adaptive bra and they have um, little pull tabs that help you secure your bra instead of having to use the little hooks. And then adaptive makeup. So this one's from God Beauty, which is owned by Selma Blair, who has a disability. And they've adapted their um, wands so that they're easier to hold for people with difficulty, that have difficulty. Smart ovens are really cool. So not only can you uh, scan barcodes and it'll automatically send those instructions to your oven. Um, it'll also let me start preheating my oven from my phone or using Alexa. And I don't have to get up off my couch to go start my oven. I can just say Alexa, preheat the oven to 350 degrees. And um, that helps conserve some energy. The Brava system has really cool smart cooking zones, very lightweight trays that are easy to, to manage pulling in and out. That's a countertop toaster oven style. And then there's lots of different varieties of microwaves as well. For your wellness and comfort, I highly recommend looking into the smart fans, heaters, and blankets. So that's something that's really nice is not to have to get up and adjust any of those temperature control devices. Just being able to say it by voice or doing on do it on your phone saves energy. These TheraBody smart goggles for individuals who have chronic migraines, like I do. I, I get migraines because of um, some of the deformities in my spine. And so these actually apply, apply pressure and heat and help relieve some of the migraine sim symptoms. And then I cannot say enough. I know this is not technically assistive technology. Cannot say enough good things about having a tankless water heater. It's very nice when I'm having a high pain day to be able to sit in the shower for as long as I need to with that hot water. Okay, so I just have to say, I understand what it's like to have to accept using some sort of device to help me achieve a goal that I maybe didn't have to do previously. And so I just, I want to say that I understand that sometimes that takes courage. And um, I hope that you can find that. I hope you find your community that supports you in doing that. And then just having the courage to try new things. So sometimes we're just not comfortable um, with technology because it's new and it's, it's something that we're not familiar with. So I just hope that you can find the courage to uh, you know, move forward using the assistive technology that's going to help you achieve your goals. And then seeking support. So I definitely wanted to let you know that there are some resources out there for you. 
um, you can find your state's AT specialist or your state's resources with a couple of these uh, avenues. So I'm actually part of an Assistive Technology Act program. There are 56 states and territories across the United States that receive federal funding for an assistive technology program in their state. So to find the contacts for your state, you would go to at3center.net and find, uh, they'll actually have, they have everybody's contacts listed out so that um, you could reach out to them, see if they have services like durable medical equipment reuse, where they actually recycle DME equipment like wheelchairs and walkers. And you can go pick that stuff up usually for free or low cost. Like in our state of Alabama, we do have a new lending library that we have put together and we are providing device demonstrations. So just contact your state and see if any of those resources are available if you wanna learn more about assistive technology. Also make sure you know about your vocational rehab and your centers for independent living. They also have resources that may be able to refer you to in your state to assist with assistive technology um, acquisition. Okay, so there's my contact information. The resource guide that you'll, when you get a link to these slides, it includes several of the products that we talked about, but then at the end, I've included the CMT wish list that's on Amazon, which has a lot of cool products listed on the wish list. And then I also have a wish list on my Amazon account where any of the products that I've talked about today, I've at least put an example of one on my wish list. So um, if you had questions about specific products that you saw, go to that wish list and just see. I do highly recommend that you do the research before purchasing anything. Um, Amazon might not always be the best place to purchase it, and what's on the wish list might not be the best product that has the features that you specifically need. So just do your research before you purchase anything. Okay, um, if you follow my program, which is AptAT on YouTube, uh, Facebook, or LinkedIn, we did just do a webinar last week on smart home technology. So you'll be able to see a little bit more about how to implement smart home tech. All right, did we have any questions? Thank you, Ashley. Holy cow, that was absolutely amazing. Just tremendous information. Really appreciate you taking the time to put so much thought into that. I think it's especially meaningful because you are a person living with CMT, so you're coming at it from our angle. Um, I you know, have one A, and so I know I'm, as I'm getting older, my my hands are you know becoming a challenge for me. So it's nice mm -hmm. to have tricks and and um, some gadgets to help with all that. So we didn't have a ton of questions come in as I suspected because you, I knew your presentation was gonna be so thorough. One question that did come in is someone asked about um, buttons and zippers. So help with buttoning shirts, zipping pants mm -hmm. and other items. So I didn't go into detail on that because it's just one of those really popular items I think that have been around a while um, they're fair it's fairly easy to do a search on Amazon or uh, Google and search for zipper pull or button helper and sometimes they'll come as sort of like a uh, what's the tool that has all the different <laughs> things to it where it'll have multiple options to help with zippers and buttons all in one compact tool was it like a leatherman um Possibly this is not the name that I'm thinking yeah. of, but I just I don't know. It'll it it even like a an an Allen wrench that folds out that um Swiss Army has all the different tools in it. Okay. Swiss okay. Army nice. Yes, there we go. Thank y'all. Okay. We have some people in the chat help with that. Thank you all. <laughs> Team effort. <laughs> I'm married to a former Marine, so I went straight to like this gnarly, you know, gadget thing. Okay. Um, let me just comb through getting such wonderful thank you, thank you, thank you um, from everyone in the audience. Um, another question, any ideas for hand cramping when gripping a computer mouse? 
Okay, I hope that you have been able to look at some varieties of different types of mice. Here in our system technology library, we have several different types, adjustable ones that um, you can use vertically, which helps with hand cramping because this is actually a very awkward position, but that's the way mice have been designed to be used. So you can get adjustable ones that some are straight vertical, and then some have the ability where you can adjust the angle yourself. There's also um, some trackball style. I actually think it is really cool to use the head pointing mouse. So you're not using your hands at all, there's one called Glass Owls, and you wear it like a pair of glasses, and you can bite down to click. And so you're using uh, mouse control completely hands-free. It's really cool. Holy cow. I'll, wow. I'll put that in there. Okay, as a... that's super helpful. Um, and someone mentioned Etsy has a lot of good zipper pull options. Um, I'm just looking through the comments real fast. Such wonderful feedback. Okay. Um, any tips on how we go? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. Any tips on how people can talk to their physicians about accessing OT services in their care delivery systems? I would say I'm not quite as familiar with healthcare systems, so I'm probably not the right person to speak on that. I don't know if Laurel, you have any advice? I mean, I'm uh, just a huge patient advocate. So just say say exactly what you need when you're advocating for yourself. I don't have a specific tip on this on how to navigate that, but I think working closely with your primary care physician, um, I have had to leave doctors who will not refer me, who will not help me, and I will find a doctor who will. And I'm trying to get to the bottom of problem solving a symptom and to get to the right healthcare professional who will help with that symptoms. So just continuing to advocate for yourself. If your primary care physician is unwilling to hear you and to refer you, then maybe that's not the right primary care physician for you. You're looking for a great partner, of course, so that when you're mm -hmm. advocating, they're going to send you to the right, the right person. Um, okay. Voice argument. For the aerosol can, one more that comment came in for aerosol cans, my hand crank is not enough to use them. I'm told the trigger pull thing won't work because my hand strength isn't enough. Is there another method that you know of? Not off the top of my head, but I'm thinking that we might need to just take a note on some of these things and look and see yeah. and, and do a follow up on some of the questions that came in for products that we don't immediately have a solution to. Yeah, that's perfect. And we can get back to people also one more. Um, and I love when people help in chat. So mm -hmm. somebody asked any recommendations for opening and closing the gas cap on a car. And then some community member chimed in and said, how about a jar opener? Would that work? So and then also... Um, Randall also added, there are gas cap wrenches, which I was not familiar with oh, myself. Oh, so. Interesting. Okay. Um, let's take one more. Um, are there any financial assist assistance resources for assisted devices? Yes. Well, we know that's tough. So we're trying to build the capacity of our state to help with those financial resources. Um, if it's job related, you could reach out to Vogue Rehab. Typically, um, they have resources available for financial assistance with job related assistive technology. It might be based on your income, but it could be an option. Um, in our state, we just did a, a funding series for uh, resources that are available in Alabama. And that's just because we're, that's part of our System Tech Act program to provide mm -hmm. those resources. So there are some organizations that do uh, limited grants for assistive technology. Um, it can be hard to find those. So reach out to your AT Act program in your state and they'll know more about what's available in your local area. Oh, that's wonderful. And then one more thing um, someone was asking, and I don't know if this is your area of exp expertise, Ashley, but like uh, the be your best recommendation for like a fold and go wheelchair I don't mm -hmm. know, work with wheelchairs. The it was for a power chair. Um, it just says, do you have a brand recommendation for a fold and go wheelchair? 
Well, it's interesting because I just myself purchased a full list, literally the brand fold and go wheelchairs. Oh, <laughs> so wow. that's why I'm confused. And it has the, uh, the power to it. So it's the one that folds up like a suitcase and it's 60 pounds. It was really easy to transport onto an airplane. And um, that was, that was literally the brand name of it. And I'm not sure if that's what you mean is the power wheelchairs or or not. But um, another brand that we have in our lending library that I've actually tried is called the Carmen Transit. And those are very similar in features between the Fold and Go and the, the Carmen. So either one of those I've actually had experience with and I would recommend. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Well, this has been incredible. So just to remind everyone, um, Ashley has shared her PowerPoint presentation that has all the resources in it. I will be sure to email that out to all of you when we email out the recording. So give us a couple days. Um, I, before we thank Ashley, would like to thank our director of technology, Sarah Gentry, for being our Zoom host and keeping us all grounded and calm with technology and hosting Zoom meetings. So thank you, Sarah Gentry. And um, Ashley, I just wanna thank you again for taking time out of your day to be part of our community and sharing education and resources that means so much to all of us. So thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much. Yep. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for being with us. Take care. Bye,